Hi guys, it's Sam and I am back today to film a new video because in case that wasn't obvious from the fact that you are watching this and it's new. Yeah. Because in case you haven't noticed, my background has changed somewhat and that is because I have gotten a brand new bookshelf. It's bigger, I can fit lots more books on it, which makes me quite happy. And so I thought, you know what, in celebration of this momentous occasion, why don't I film a bookshelf tour for you all? So that is what I'm here to film today. So yes, yes, let us set forth on the bookshelf tour. So to start things off, I figured I would show you what my bookshelf looks like. It is about six feet-ish tall, five shelves, perfect size, I think. I only, this is really the only spot I have for a bookshelf. It took me forever to find one that would fit this space, and this guy fit the ticket, plus I like the little detailing up top. This is what it looks like in its entirety. Now let me show you what wonderful books that I have in my collection. Okay, so my first shelf here is my Harry Potter shelf, in case you couldn't tell, where I have all of the hardback first editions of the Harry Potter books, and then the brand new paperback editions that just came out this year or last year. So I won't show you the hardbound ones, um, since I'm sure you guys have all seen those, but I will show you the paperback ones because I love these new covers because they're just so cool looking. First one is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, of course. I'm sure you already knew that, but you know, whatever. Um, and the cover looks like this. The next book is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and this is what the paperback cover looks like. Book number three, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This one is one of my favorites. I love this cover, Harry's Patronus. Book number four, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Book number five, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, featuring the gang on their way to, you know, the Ministry of Magic to kick some Voldemort butt. Book number six, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is my other favorite cover, featuring Dumbledore and Harry going to collect and destroy one of the Horcruxes. It's an awesome cover. And lastly, book number seven, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Though I do think this cover is cool. It is my least favorite of the seven. As, as all together, as you can see, the books make Hogwarts Castle, which I think is so cool. I also have these three, which is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Quidditch Through the Ages, and of course, Tales of Beetle the Bard. Also have a couple of pre-movie Harry Potter merchandise from the first book, Winged Keys, and Ron playing chess in the chess game. Yes, this is how long I have been reading these books, since way before the movies. Okay, so moving on to my second bookshelf. And keep in mind, none of these aren't in any particular order. I just kind of threw the books where I thought they looked good. So yes, let us start over here. Over here I have my Jane Austen Complete Novels. So leather bound, gilded pages edition. I really, really love this. Comes with a bookmark. Over here is kind of my Tamora Pierce section um, with two of the books that belong in this quartet, but they're hardbound, so I set them over there. So I'll start from the bottom up. The first three books on the bottom here are actually part of the Squire's Tales by Gerald Moores, which are retellings of Arthurian legends. Middle grade books, really, really good. Um, I don't have all of the books in this series, but the first one that I have is Squire's Tale, which is actually the first book in the series. The next one I have is Quest of the Fair Unknown, and the last one I have is The Lioness and the Knight. And there's about like 10 of these in the series. I want to eventually get them all because they're hilarious and great retellings. The next book is Becca Cooper Terrier, which is the first in the Becca Cooper. Becca, Becker, <laughs> Becca Cooper trilogy by Tamora Pierce. I have the other two on my Kindle but this is what the first one looks like. The next two books are part of a duology and they feature Alana who was featured in her first quartet's daughter. And the first one is Trickster's Choice with the second one being Trickster's Queen. The next three books are actually part of the series that is over here, so I'll show you guys those next. This next quartet right here is part of the Circle of Magic Quartet. The first one being Sandra's book. Book two is Triss's book. 
The third one is Daja's book. And the fourth one is Briar's book. And these all feature four friends who are who have been brought for various reasons to the School of Magic to learn to harness their specific special abilities. The next quartet featuring the same characters is the Circle Opens Quartet. Book one is Magic Steps featuring Sandry. Book two is Street Magic featuring Briar. And now we can come over here to these two. Book three is Cold Fire, Cold Fire, <laughs> Cold Fire featuring Daja. Book four is Shattered Glass featuring Triss. And basically it just shows them after they have all left each other and gone about their various ways as they're older and what they get into while they're not together. That was a horrible way to describe that. But take my word for it, they're pretty good. I need to reread them so I haven't read them in years. The next book I have uh, by Tamara Pearson's shelf is The Will of the Empress. And this book is actually all of those guys back together again to help deal with this empress who has this evil plot, not all that she seems. That uh, is the basic gist of it. I haven't read this in years, so I actually can't remember all the plot points, but I really, really want to reread this series because I believe she actually came out with some further books featuring these characters. The next two books I have over here are the first two books in the Lunar Chronicle series. So you have Cinder, Cinder, which I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with, and Scarlet, which I just finished reading. Next over here I have uh, some J.R.R. Tolkien books. So I have The Hobbit, a leather-bound gilded page edition I recently found at Target and I had to get because I didn't own The Hobbit and I love it. I think it's cool. Got some maps in there. Next I have my very very sad trilogy. Used library editions that I need to completely replace because they are very well loved. Then next I have The Children of Hiram by J.R.R. Tolkien, which just features Middle Earth thousands of years before the events in Lord of the Rings. Very good. I have a review video on it that I can link below if you guys are curious. The next two books I have over here are both Sherwood Smith books. The first one is Inda and is the first book in her series to feature this character. I eventually want to get the other three because this is such a good series. The next book is Crown Duel and it sort of takes place in the same... Um, the same world as Inda, but I believe it is centuries later. But yes, also very, very good. And the second to last book on the shelf is A Princess Bride by William Goldman. Fantastic book in case you haven't read it. It is better. It is not better. It's just as good as the movie for once. The last book I have on the shelf is my copy of Jane Eyre, one of my all-time favorite books. I found this at my university bookstore when I was in college. It has gilded pages and a bookmark. It's small and I, of course I had to get it because I love this book. So my next shelf actually features some of my favorite books. So I'll start over here. I have some random bookmarks, a couple of signed bookmarks by Michael J. Sullivan that my friend kindly procured for me. The first two books are part of a duology, Innocent Mage, Kingmaker, Kingbreaker duology. The first one is Innocent Mage by Karen Miller. The second one is Awakened Mage by Karen Miller. The next book I have down here is Graceling by Kristen Kishore, which looks like this. One of my all-time favorite book covers. It just looks cool and you cannot but help fall in love with a cool book. It's like a work of art. The next two books on the shelf are the part of the Briere of Revelation series. I'm it's a trilogy. I am missing the first book because I'm not really missing it. It just happens to be sitting over there on my bed because I'm reading it, but book one, Theft of Swords. Book two is Rise of Empire, but I, is not on my shelf right now because I'm reading it. And book number three, my favorite cover of the three, is Heir of Novron. Look how cool it is. Royce and Hadrian, guys two very badass characters. The next two books on my shelf are part of the um, King Killer Chronicles of Patrick Rothfuss, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, another gorgeous book cover, and book two by Patrick Rothfuss, The Wise Man's Fear. The next book is Tales Before Tolkien, which is just a collection of short stories that either influence Tolkien or um, people who were influenced by Tolkien. I haven't finished reading this and I got it like 15 years ago so I need to get on that. The next book is Lord of Snow and Shadows, book one of the Tears of Arthamon by Sarah Ash. Very very good series. These next two books are part of the Gentle Ambassadors series by Scott Lynch. Book one, The Lies of Locke Lamora. If any of you guys have watched a lot of my videos will know I absolutely loved. 
and book two, Red Seas Under Red Skies. The next four books I have are part of The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, and as you can see, I had strategically placed my dragon figurine here. I felt it was fitting. Book one is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Book two is Eldest. Book three is Brisinger. Love this one. And book number four is Inheritance. And now we move down to what I call my Doctor Who shelf. You'll notice there's not as much as there was in my prior bookshelf because the bookshelf is a little bit narrower. I had to move my lamp over to my dresser and a few other things, but these are some of my favorite Doctor Who items. So I have my Doctor Who TARDIS mug. Here is two novelized versions of classic Doctor Who episodes, Doctor Who and the Abominable Snowman, and Doctor Who and the Day of the Daleks. I have my Doctor Who coffee tumbler, which doesn't work anymore because the lid broke. It was a very, very sad day. This is my Doctor Who The Vault book, 50 years of treasures from the first 50 years of Doctor Who, and one of my favorite purchases, book purchases of this year. I will show you the awesomeness inside. This book was chock full of so much awesome Doctor Who info from the entire length of the show. Tons of really cool pictures and original um, scripts and things with the notes on it, just full of tons and tons of awesomeness. And over here I have my collection of Doctor Who DVDs, my random cute little adipose stress toy, and of course every Doctor Who collection is not complete unless it has sonic screwdrivers, so here I have 10s and 11s. Now the last shelf on my bookshelf is sort of my TBR bookshelf, so these are books I haven't read that I am intending to get to soon, and as well various uh, graphic novels, magazines, random books and things. So, first book on my TBR shelf is Snow Walker by Katherine Fisher, Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore, next book is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence, Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, and I hate this cover. This is a perfect example of really crappy paperback covers. John Grisham's Skipping Christmas. Alice Hoffman's Practical Magic. Hollow World by Michael J. Sullivan. Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. Fire by Kristen Kishore, another book in the Grace Lean series. Ruby Red by Kristen Gear. 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 I'm not even going to try. And The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. And finally, Wildwood by Colin Malloy, with illustrations by Carson Ellis. The rest of these books are just sort of random little bits that I have, I don't know quite know where to put, so they're here. I may or may not have read them, etc. They're not necessarily part of my TBR pile. The first one is The Life of Charlemagne by Einhard. Awesome book. I love history. I love reading about history. And to read about Charlemagne from the perspective of somebody that lived with him was just so cool. So I recommend this, and it's just a quick little read. Next is my Doctor Who The Forgotten Graphic Novel. This one I have not read, but hope to get to soon. Fables Graphic Novel by Bill Willingham, Lan Medina, Steve Leal, Hull, I'm not going to say that right, Craig Hamilton, which I am currently reading and so far enjoying. The Sandman by Neil Gaiman, which I recently finished, and it was excellent, of course, because it was by Neil Gaiman. The Legend of Zelda Hyrule Historia, which is a super awesome history of the making of Zelda, from the very first Zelda game to the most recent. This next book is one of my favorites, Castles and Palaces and Stately Houses of Britain, Ireland, which just features different castles and manor houses in their brief history. It's a really, really cool book. And this book, which my sister got me, because she knows my love of medieval times and history, and it is Night, A Genuine and Most Authentic Guide, a noble guide for young squires. And it's just a cool little middle grade book that has like various pictures and like doors that open and stuff. It's like an interactive book, but it was still, it was still cool. Got a little knight's head that pops out at you. And the last book, which is actually seen off to the side of my bookshelf because I couldn't quite fit it in, but I'm trying, I'm reading off and on, is A Short History of the Middle Ages. I actually got this in school when I had a medieval studies class in college, but I was, we never read the whole thing, just bits and pieces, and I love reading medieval history books, so I had it out to read it, and as you would expect, it is a history book, but it is fascinating, I assure you. All right, guys, that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys thought some of those books were interesting. Let me know if you have read any of them because, of course, I'm on booktube. That's what I like to do is talk to you guys about books I like. So, yes, 
that was it. And now I'm beginning to see why people hate filming bookshop tours. It was a little bit hard to film, but I did it anyway. So yeah, that's my video for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, until my next video. Bye.